All right, sick chat. We actually get to use the tournament client for one game. Okay, so taking Witcher ST on red or on blue, and then we have uh, we have Queen's Guard Skellige on red here. Um, we see three engines in the starting hand of uh, Nine Cager. We also see Olagod. Actually, well, we have more of the Working good cat. tournament <laughs> client, P-O-G-G-I-E-S. Thank you, uh, thank you, Grander. I appreciate the sub. Welcome back for the 30, 31 fucking months, man. You spent 31 months subbing to me. Jesus, dude. Well, welcome back. You are, uh, you've been an idiot for 31 months. How does it feel? What patch is this? It's still the current one. Like, what do you mean, what patch? Patch doesn't drop. Then the next one doesn't drop till tomorrow. So it's still the current one, right? But so we see a couple of good engines in hand for nine cager. We got the self-sustaining dancing, tangoing matrons that get to uh, generate two points per turn in tandem. Um, that's gonna be a lot of a lot of points here. We see very slowly is this Delbathon I'm gonna get rid of. Um, there's also a TA just to keep it alive too. So, um, we get to see an all god as well. All god in the hand, really good for nine cager. Um, however, I don't know. PB's hand is kind of hard to get round control with. I don't know. There's gonna be kind of a there's there's no crow mother either. Which Mata is really the only consistency for this crow mother, and that's obviously. Yeah, so it's a lot less good of a hand for PB here. So I don't know. I think he's just going to lose this round, and then 9K is going to get a chance to push. So maybe, I don't know. He probably has to go and throw down another engine here. Mm -hmm. Playing the Matron gets another engine down, gets buffed up way out of range. Um, and now you have your self-sustaining engine, so you, you can play your all god next, potentially. Because I think you want to you wanna definitely get that all god down, but you'd want to play it so that it gets buffed, right? You don't want to uh, give them the gutting slash for six. So all god would have to go to the right of these to get a bufferino. Yeah, all god does come down. I've never seen these in a deck before. How did I miss them? What are these cards? Move an enemy unit to the left. Damage by one for every card it passed. Huh. I have never seen those before. I have not seen that played once. I saw... Wait, wait wasn't the At Master or... Hmm, was it an opener Masters that we saw Cole go for that? Maybe it was Qualifiers. I can't remember. We, we saw a game where Cole Mullen was playing in tournament and, had to, and, and went for one of those options. Or at least I thought it was Cole, but... But yeah, you almost never see that card. You almost never see that card. So, good. We get to see it here. But yeah, just trying to get that enough of those Witcher tags in the deck, so. All right. What does it roll? Not so, not so great. Ariel's been chosen. The gods speak to him. Okay, so... This protector is going bye bye, or this sentry. It's not a protector anymore. It's a sentry. Oh wait. Okay, cat with your add up, getting rid of the bleeding and giving it vitality. So now it's up at two. Range giving number of units on that unit's row. Okay, so it's just the back row. Or it's the back row for its own row, right? Not much left. Yeah, that. so nine cage are able to get the full carryover down, having v both Vesemir and Olga in the round one hand, as well as enough engines to really kind of solidify the round. So in terms of buffs, we see. I'd lend you a hand, but then I'd have none. All the all god buffs. All the all god buffs going on on the Witchers, so 
possibly wants to do a push in round two just to bleed everything out and just go for witchers kind of like with uh like with nr i mean your your, your leader is a bit worse style that's right i like fighting with style but I don't know, how do you really answer... You played out a decent amount of your engine, and how do you really answer the Queen's Guards? The windmill. It sticks spin around and smash you. Like, you could just leader charge one of them and have them all go front row, and then you just lacerate it with your Gezerus, but I think, yeah, you probably still just push more. Hmm. Because Brian isn't doing a whole heck of a lot in this matchup either. You could use it for like Queen's Guard removal later on, but then they're already getting a decent bit of value out of it. And we see the Cat Witcher students, the Cat Witcher adepts, coming down for some pretty sad. So this is like the really sad thing about this card, right? Like it, you take a while to swarm, and then like you just lose all this vitality. Like, unless, uh, unless you're just able to swarm, like, super fast in one turn, then, um, yeah, I mean, like, Witcher's Swarm a bit fast, so you can get to the three vitality right away, but then, like, like, if you go Quinn into Witcher's, you can get some pretty good vitality value down early with the Cat Witcher add up, but, Yeah, I I don't understand either, Wilson. It's kind of a tragedy that all the salamis were lost. But I mean, if you're gonna have to keep some, then I guess then I guess this is fine. I guess this is fine. So it looks like PB Let's trying hard to go for like a bit of a win on even here. Still have Gezris left, playing for a whole heck of a lot of points and no answer to the Gezris. So. Probably just see uh, nine cage are committed here. Cause committing right now, do you make the points you get? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine. I mean, Gezris, Gezris always makes it right. First, does the cat with your mentor? I mean, just don't go greedy. I guess just go Gezris, right? But I guess he would go Gezerus back row. We didn't take so he can get the, the Dryad Matron buff later on. So he just went leader charge too to be a bit safer. But I like the Gezerus going back row first so you get the extra value out of the Matron. It's pretty nice. So this pretty much gets him the round, like very easily. Not, I mean, it's expensive, but yeah, I wish he would have used that leader charge because like leader charge is a bit too expensive there. Like sh shouldn't have used it, but yeah, probably not too unhappy just to, just to play your gizzards there. Like, it's not going to do all that much if you're bleeding. <clears throat> so, quite a bit of top end that 9k would like to find. PB would like to find, obviously, Triss. I mean, Harold's nice too, but found a good bit of it. Like, Triss, Triss probably being one of the more significant ones. And we see breaking into a Witcher here that's obviously terrible. Um, because that cripples your bleed so much as well. Like, now you have two extra cards in this hand you can't play out. This Cat Witcher kind of sucks as well. Like, yeah, this bleed is so, so limp. Do they have any way to kill Geralt? Shielded. Okay. Right. Going for Vesemir here. So, Eskel, we're going to play for a good bit of value. Might 
Not sure if it's going to force that much, to be honest, but because like this cat witcher isn't doing a whole heck of a lot. Imagine that in NR with Erland. I mean, I played an all god Vesemir Erland, uh, Erland Witcher's deck. We, uh, and actually, uh, it, it for January season, I won a decent amount of games with it too. It was actually pretty sick. Like I won like six games in a row to get to like twenty-five, twenty, or thirty. Boats for all the tokens? No, 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 no. Like, I actually played this kind of, like, semi-seriously. It was just all god, Erland, Witchers, and then had Tamari and Chad. Chad Chaddington. And I played some games in the TV. And I, I almost baited Green Knight with it. I almost baited Green Knight with it because it was doing so well. It gets easier, kid. Never enjoyable, but easier. I mean... This is the voice line. This is is this me? Is this me talking to your mother? It gets easier as we're trying different things. Okay, let's go get another one. There needs to be an eight. So it's either Saris or Triss. So probably Triss. Triss always makes it, right? Triss into Freyas. Triss into Freya. Yeah, Triss into Freya does it, and Triss into Talisman also does it at the moment. Saris feels. Uh, I'm ready. Saris felt a bit committal, but eh. I suppose. Tr I suppose Triss is essentially Saris, right? Is there any way Triss mid? No, it's like guaranteed talisman, guaranteed because there's no specials in the Witcher deck. So I mean, Triss is guaranteed, and Triss is the same thing as Saris, really. So no, I guess it doesn't really. It didn't really matter at all, and it doesn't even matter. So we got Brehim to kill one of these, but we still we see access to basically three of them. Oh, Stiga Castle. So I mean. Pretty ideal hand for an Encager here. Um, missing out on Ermion instead of this Freya. So, I mean, people that's hand could be about two points better or so. But you're going to have these Queen's Guard stick. So, that's nice. Like, you get some guaranteed Queen's Guard value. You don't really get Swarm value. A lot of these, oh, a lot of these are like engines, though. Is there any, like, because I don't think you want to res. With Freya, I don't think you want a Freya Queen's Guard. Is it really? Because it's not really doing that much for you. So I guess actually, I guess you just try and Triss Talisman. And by try, I mean you get it; it's guaranteed. So I guess you just Triss Talisman. You have Freya. Like you can trigger. You can have these two Queen's Guards. I mean, one of them dies due to Brehen, so you got one of them still popping off at least. I'm in no mood to talk. But you get a trigger, right? Unless Crow Mother goes on the same row. <sighs> oh, yeah, never mind. I forgot Pact. Nine Cager runs the Pact. The single Pact, just because he was forced into running it, I guess. Yeah, okay, yeah. And I forgot about Slash, too. So yeah, it's not guaranteed, but I mean, chances are high. You find the talisman. I kind of for I completely forgot about the pact. You can use the exclamation point bracket command to find all the find the lists in the in these games right now, all on the same 
site. Oops. Oh, such good value from this. So he actually could possibly kill both. Yeah, nice Cat Witcher there. That's a nice play. Using Leader Charge and then the Cat Witcher to kill it off. I really like that. It gets your engine established. And then still gets value going on the next turn to the back row without having to spend another Leader. So, yeah, it's a really good Cat Witcher there. So, like, if he plays... If he plays... The, sh the things around the Brehen, then it plays into the Saboteur, right? Huh. Greta, I don't think... I think there's too much separation right now for PB to do anything. Like, I don't... I don't there's, there's too much of a gap. There's, like, nothing he can do to win at this point. Like, it's just kind of game over, but... It is quite nice for Nine Cager to also have the Saboteur and the and the Brehen. You can't really like effectively play around this shit. <laughs> Wonder if he was trying to think about like hitting off the skulls. Like, he, you kind of need to high roll at this oh, point, no, right? No, you can't just sacrifice it. So actually, when he uses his charges here, it allows... No, I mean... Bow before modern Freya. He can use leader charge, and then Brian just kills it. So now there's three units on each row, for now. So... Okay, just gonna use all of those there. I was gonna say if you didn't like start pinging off a bunch of skulls, then like this could just get killed. It still can get killed, right? Like, you can use this in a leader charge. I mean, your Brian's kind of sad, but I mean, you're just winning. Or you could just Brian kill this off, and then just use this for more value on Harold. I mean, none of your plays matter. <laughs> Oh, it goes this. To, I, I really should read this card. To the leftmost position. Okay. Okay, so these don't play. Oh, never mind. I thought, for whatever reason, I was thinking that this was, it went left to, to right. And then it, like, makes sense. It'd be good to have with Brehan, but no, they do the same thing, right? You play around one, you play around both. It would help, help if this guy was ever see, see any play. Maybe then I'd remember its ability. Gonna have the reach. Well, not today. As we see Witchers taking it. You thought it was whatever way? Move an enemy unit to the left most position on the row. No, so it's always always you're gonna be moving from the rightmost to the leftmost, right? You fight me or you watch her die. And Witcher's winning pretty handily there. Alright. Actually because like I said, I mean that round one hand was pretty pretty nice for nine K. Round two sucked. Round two hand was terrible. But still was able to maintain his card. Still was able to get at least a little bit of a push. Um, so it was okay. But uh, round one, absolutely ter uh, absolutely disgusting. Uh, are you talking about a card keg? Choosing Geralt Quinn or Vesemir Mentor? Um... 
I like Quen because it's more like like if you're just starting out, like it can fit into more decks. Whereas Vesemir Mentor is kind of hard locked for the most part. I mean, we see it here in a different list than NR, but uh, I, w I would still pick Quen as it's a little bit more flexible. We've seen Quen being able to be slotted into more decks than than Vesemir Mentor. Vesemir Mentor right now is kind of just locked to NR's version of Witchers. Um. Whereas Quen, we've seen it in Clogger's decks with like Colgrim and and uh, and Viper Mentors, as well as we saw it in a couple patches ago, Movement, Scoy as Hell, uh, kind of a non-devotion precision strike. It was really, really strong in being able to shield Gezerus was really nice. So I would go for Quen personally, but I don't know. And, and like if you're going to play, if, 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 you, if you're looking to play, and our witchers, I mean, you need both, so probably just go for the Quinn. Yeah, just just craft the Quinn. I think it's probably be your best bet. All right, and we made it in another game. All right, so we see Arch Griffin obviously being taken on blue not a surprise and we see the alzer cosplay deck this is actually mo my favorite deck of of these these two not because it's like it's like alzer decks are super interesting but full on alzer cosplay you have double cross leader you have all of the alzer cards right you have alzer's thunder alzer alzer's double cross in double cross like uh i i I just I just respect that level of a uh, level of cosplay, where you start to think about like getting the leader down to cosplay too, and the, just because it's a double crop, uh, ah, it's just good. I I'm just fanboying over it right now, guys. Because I feel like I've seen a lot of like the meme decks. I haven't really seen one like this. Not using an alzer skin. True. That I'm a little upset about. That does take a lot away from. It. A lot of way for me so should have definitely uh ran the alzer leader skin if you're going on the full cosplay ah sag all right well we see again donamir having to come in here because of the threat of yen yen and all the removals so Donamir coming in here just so we can go and boost up the Arch Griffin. We don't see Arch Griffin in hand. We don't see AAA or a Neuromancy yet. So gonna have to leader this turn for Arch Griffin, get it down, start buffing it up right away. So I'd want to think that the nine Kadri wants to get out of this round quite quick because you're not able to do anything against this Arch Griffin right now. And you want a round where it's a little bit more exposed. Now there is, I believe, a renew for Donamir, so you may just get hard clapped in round two either way. But I don't know, you're gonna extra get clapped if it's just And chances are he's gonna find the renew, right? He's got a Nero. Got renew. Like you have you have two two chances for that there. Is there any thinning he can really do? Not really any thinning. Sadly. So you got fifteen cards to find two of them and three draws and two mulligans. But it's not like super super hard. Please wait, your excellency. I'm falling behind. Alright, so we expect this stratagem to come down on the griffin. There's also uh for its glory. Okay, just decides to go for the go for the vitality here. Not really super worried. Obviously, if you veil this, then you're not able to use these uh, these mad charges on it. So I like getting this first one done. You probably don't play the second one, to be honest. You probably just go stratagem and pact. I would like to say, and then if he doesn't get out, then you can start going into like your engines. But you don't want to spend them if you don't have to. So. You can kind of just see if he's going to pass and go stratagem pact. Because you won't really have a good chance to pact the Arch Griffin in like later rounds because you don't have this, this Veil stratagem. 
and you don't have any other way to get Veil, so these packs are a lot less good after that. Especially after this this really weak play, you gotta assume he's just gonna pass. So, do we see Stratagem into Pact come down next? Or is PB thinking of another option at the moment? All the other options feel a little bit more committal. Mad Charge isn't really doing a whole heck of a lot for you, doing the second one. Um, now, you would go Mad Charge if, like, Nankager is putting up a fight, but it just, just with that Thunder, that zero-point Thunder is just... You have to feel he's just going to look to pass. Again, not being able to get through this defender. Oh. Okay, that a little bit wrong ordering there. Um. Okay, well, Arch Griffin, bye bye. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hate to see it. Uh, goodbye, Arch Griffin. <laughs> it was nice knowing you. Oh uh, no. Uh you hate to see it. <laughs> mm. That is a bit sad. Well, I mean, he didn't draw a Nero. He didn't draw the... I mean, he may have drawn the Arch Griffin if it wasn't Doom, but, you know, doesn't have the Nero, doesn't have the AA anyway. So, like, if if you like to think that he would have just drawn the Arch Griffin anyway, then this is still kind of kind of sad. But, I mean, I, you, you still have, like... 28 point arch griffin for a short round three but yeah uh. if the king demands a head i'll give him yours <laughs> uh poor arch griffin <laughs> he was not long for this world it's like what do you even do so you have Anseus and Selkirk to try and get rid of. Um, get rid of Alzer. Like, I... Uh, so, like... I guess you don't bleed. You try and just out-engine. But if you go renew on Defender right away and then Invo comes down into, like, Yoakim, then Alzer is able to survive without having to spend, like, a lot of expensive spells. Like, that still has a Nero and Triangle, so that allows your Alzer to get through. You have Uma as well. So, like, Alzer's coming down, and Alzer's, uh, like, allowed to survive if you go down a mirror really early. Um, I, and, I mean, you have Defender, too, I guess. You have, you have Fifion. Um, so it looks like we're going Alzer now, just to get the pass. We do... I mean, if he draws into a Sire, you can still get Alzer again. Uh, and high, high roll Cantarella time. Okay. No high roll on the Canta. I don't know, though. PB still might just be fine in a long round. Like, could still just be fine. But then again, if the defender gets played right away and then just gets Invo Yoakim, then it might be in some trouble because, like, Anseus and Selkirk are doing absolute nothing. So... Yeah. Also, Nine Cager needs to find... Um, needs to find that a sire, kind of. It's going to be a bit... Otherwise, he doesn't have, like, have any points, right? Like, what, what what points do you really have? I mean, these poisons are playing for okay value. You have removal for some of the engines. You have the Invo and Yoakim. All right, we do not see the Asire, so going to have to Yoakim into it, potentially, if you want to. But then you can't Yoakim into the Defender, so... I don't know. Like, you have a bit of removal, but you really don't have points. Then again, this... This Visigoda, 
is playing for absolute ass and you do have a leader still you do have a leader as opposed to pb So let's see what he decides to start off. But probably assuming his defender just gets invoked if he leads off with defender. Could just start Tritum. God, why? I'm going to do the. I, I'm just like so far off camera today. I don't know. I've just been. I don't know why I want to lean this way today. Oh, the Yolo Kim into the Asire gets oh gets Alzer. All right, guys, we get to see Alzer Yolo Kim. What are the chances? Okay, so it was a one in three to get the Yolo into Asire. Ah, oh, sick. So we got the Alzer back. We get to proc him as well. We get to proc him as well. So that's that's nice. Last time I last time I did like the drunk big lean, it didn't end well for me. Red Rain's too skilled. I can't ever imitate. Last last time I attempted a big lean, uh, Green Knight ditched me, and I woke up with a hangover the next day and a really really painful sore, funny bone. Like it was it was just like sore for a week. I thought I like tore something. Like it was oh it was fucked up. Oh yeah, I didn't edit the score command either. All right, let me do score so I can copy it first, because I'm lazy. Okay, copy that. Ah, oh, fuck you, Wilson. Ah, oh, I was typing. Okay, I'll cut. I'll cut that one. Cause it all the the score will update soon. Okay, pog. Okay, it's fine. So we see a defender come down. There's no way to stop this poison, so these poisons get to efficiently answer this. Um, Visigota comes down. Visigotes kind of gets to live, right? Also, he has to go Alzer real soon. Eh, I mean, he has a handful of spells, but would like to go Alzer potentially soon. Goes Leader first. So Leader misses out on Anna. And goes for the poison here to threaten this uh, Visigoda. How is he going to choose to answer it? I guess. Um, I guess Triangle. Can this get boosted up past seven? Not really, right? So Triangle gets to answer the Visigoda. And then a Nero comes down. You still have th three spells to proc. But, I mean, Night Cage are already up 26 to 9, and it's taken quite a while for PB to get these engines to stick. Yeah, just going the Ana there is good. And Ana gets to live now, too, which is super nice. And obviously, Triangle is pretty sad uh, on Visigoda at the moment. Oh yeah, it perfectly kills Anna. Anna's at a seven too. No, very, very good. Uh, very good triangle on Anna. I don't know why I was thinking she was like uh, eight provision there. Because I'm a monkey. But I'm not flinging my shit, so guess not. So we got Alzer. We have three spells left to trigger it. 
nothing to deal with it either. No unsays for PB lead, which is absolutely huge. So missing out on the unsays, I'm thinking loses him the game. So I think Night Cage is going to make it out here. Again, hitting that Asire was massive. I am really excited to see what this Invo, or what this, uh, this, this, this Uma, Uma gets us. Oh, Croc. So we got Croc. I mean, Queen of the Night, too. What is Croc doing? Nothing like a dwarf to get you into a tight spot. Mm. Your blood smells so Brewer is a bit of a sag. I mean, it's not terrible, though. It's not a terrible create. These dogs have no honor. I'm guessing we're just going to invo the Selkirk. I mean, maybe you just... So packed... I mean, you could just pack the Alzer at this point. But then again, if this goes front row, then all nah, 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 nah. But yeah, invoking the Selkirk, but then your Alzer, your last proc doesn't go off if you don't. So I think invoking the Selkirk is... Holy shit! That's the best create, isn't it? That is absolutely the best 9 provision create. Jesus, dude. Ah, skilled. Big skilled. <laughs> Alpa! <laughs> uh, well done. Impressive. All right, well, I'm just going to preemptively give the update to the command here. Uh... Ah, I mean, so there's just a pact. Maybe I preemptively did this. This Selkirk is going to straight kill Tibor. So there's 13 more points. 15. A into this. Actually, did I preemptively do this? This might. Oh. Oh, wait. Selkirk already dueled. Never mind. I'm an actual monkey. I'm an actual monkey. All right. So, what do we have left? We have the decks left for Nine Cager is this monsters uh, all in wild hunt cosplay. Probably the least interesting deck out of the bunch is what we have uh, left here, and it has to try and get through all of these. It's going to have to abuse red because I think that's the only thing it can really do. But then again, like you're just getting abused. This, this pincer maneuver is going to absolutely hard clap this. Um, what do you beat? I'm not thinking you're beating Koshi with that. I think Wild Hunt Cosplay has like zero chance against every greed. That's why I don't like it for like meme lineups because it's just weak too. Not only is it just like very much just uninteresting to build it's extremely weak i feel like to like everything especially when you're running devotion like the wild hunt cosplays often run devotion so it's just extremely weak to everything because they just outgreed it and like pile off so i don't know how like chad griffin claps it for sure and then pb gets two reds so it can't ever abuse that coin like super efficiently Any last words? so this is the match eh, this is potentially the matchup where I, I this is the most winnable matchup for nine cager um gonna have to like hard smork a bleed right like you gotta you gotta win this run and then Just win this round, hard smork a bleed. Win this round with one set of larva, take the second set of larva into the next round, and just, just 
just smork with this larva in the thrall. And then, if you can, if you can like maintain a card, take like Osril and this uh, this Aridin or not uh, Aridin, uh, Oberon. Osril Oberon in a short round should be just enough to beat him. Not just enough, but quite more than enough. Like even with this Crow Mother, this 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 deck uh, lacks a short round. I mean, a totem. Is, is its main like I mean crow mother gives you a little bit extra added to that short round for sure but uh. so crow mama luckily in pp's hand for him though this game I'm actually able to draw it here um draws the mata as well so I was able to get well, another one of his top ends so it's gonna be Triss or Saris 50 50 between those two at the moment for which one he gets so Panzer. Panzer. So, nothing really to, like, answer these, however. Like, Striga, I guess. So, like, later on, Striga is a, it's a pretty good answer for, for these Queen's Guards, but, you know, not for a bit. So using the, the TA to play around Slash, we don't see a Slash in PP's hand currently. I'd lend you a hand, but then I'd have none. Hmm. So, as much as I've played this card in Lippy, this is the first time I noticed he just has one arm. This is the first time I noticed that he just has one arm. Huh. I don't train on the cone. I hate it. Wonder how I missed that. <laughs> Warhawk de Varie. Uh, uh. For King Oberon. God. I pay so much attention, chat. All right, Conqueror is coming down just for some good value. Um, however. You know, it's going to be hard to win this round without committing the gels into, uh... I wish you just would have committed. Like, not gotten super greedy, just committed the Ardgith. Like... Because now it feels a bit bad, right? Should have just went for it earlier. Like, I know it enables these Queen's Guards, but ugh, you, you still just have to go for it. Otherwise, you're never really forcing him out. He's able to continuously trigger the Queen's Guards, too. But now you're getting pretty happy if he continues further into this round. It really shortens round two for you to bleed more efficiently. Although, just hope he doesn't draw. I mean, Egern gets heat waved, so he's going to want to heat wave the Egern. Deny a bit of the Azro value. <laughs> so, second Queen's Guard comes down. So, PP are looking to really fight for this round. I don't know. I mean, you could threaten quite a bit. Probably just got to play this Purify here. Play for that Thrive Curve. This Nagelfar's Taskmaster giving you points per turn is really nice, too. Okay, so going in on the Nithrel is fine as well. Um, it's a little bit more committal, obviously, but I guess you're worried about having to probably play out the Oberon, and yeah, that's fine. I mean, Nithril is going to be awkward and super short bleed, and PB's already shown that he wants to go shorter. 
So I like just committing the Nithril, then you get, you get to go at least a little bit further. <sighs> oh, I'm tired today. I need, I need to go to bed. Again. So I mean, Talisman's gonna play for a lot for sure, and you're getting both these Queen's Guards activated, so you're playing full value Talisman. You have the Heat Wave, so like you can play deeper into the round for sure. Question is, how deep can Nine Cager play? I mean, if he's if he's worried about, I mean, if you're if you're gonna potentially threaten the win on even, then obviously just play Oberon. It's a little bit less bad in Devotion decks, Oberon Mon 1, just because, like, you don't have this complete terrible Conqueror, like in other non-Devotion lists that you can hit. Their hair, so silky. Okay, so now the engine value is pretty much gone for PB. So he's hoping just to not have to play Matatas at all. Rubbish. This one has the life force of a cockroach. So Heatwave trades for Oberon here. It's really about eat. I mean, pretty good trade for PB. I mean, is it? So you go into the short round as nine cager with just with just Azrael, you just bleed out. Are you able to? Are you able to? Just win the short round a card down with just Azrael and double leader charge. I don't know. Still one more talisman. Maybe you're just. Hmm. You have Aridin. Maybe you're fine in the long round. Is there any really removal for Aridin? I don't think there's any real removal for any of your engines. Maybe you just take the long round with like Ardgaith, Aridin, Phantom. Like maybe you're just meant to take the long round at the, that point because you can kill off. You can kill off uh, a Queen's Guard with Striga. There's only Triss for a Talisman left. So there's one potential Talisman. I mean, there's quite a bit of Queen's Guard, so they're going to be able to swarm. Um, then again, like the engine value you have here is. Hmm. I feel like you could just be fine passing, but it could also go poorly. I'm not sure. Like, obviously, you want that Ardgaith value. I mean, Larva and Airden, like, it should just be enough, right? So what's the other value that PB has? Yeah, and I mean with a hand like that you're kind of forced into the pass, but I think the pass is going to be okay. Like, you should just be good. So we see Squirrel coming down to do nothing whatsoever. Huh. Mata is going to be a little bit awkward, I feel like. Like, is lengthening the round that good for PB even? So, draws back into the Ardgaith again, finds... Um, finds Aridin as well, which is super nice. Is there really... There's no real answer for Aridin. There's double gutting Slash, I guess. So, Triss, Triss could find, like, a Slash if you're able to set up the Bloodthirst, but... There's also leader charges from Carapace, so Aridin never dies. Aridin almost never dies. Uh, Ermian. Yeah, Ermian just to, So you got a bunch of Freyas, like... Striga isn't super impactful, but... It's hard to see this hand really losing... For 9 Cager, but... Maybe I'm wrong. Would like to maybe see... Like a larva over this Egern, and then you would just nagle far for for Striga instead. 
The Hound is okay to pick up. Like, just having an extra engine is kind of nice. So the only damage, I guess the damage for Egern is going to come through Harold. But if you go, hmm. Six. I mean, you could wait a turn on the Egern too. Just going, air it in to get the value down. Yeah. Potentially forces uh, PB. I mean... He should just play back row every time. Just keep playing into that. Yep, and then you get the Egern down, and then you go Phantom probably. I mean, Phantom into Hound into Ardgaith. Or I guess it's, no, you go Ard, hmm. Ardgaith is like three-ish points of chance. So you go Ardgaith first. Even if it's not hitting both rows. You'll eventually be hitting both rows. So maybe... So our gift is three turns. Yeah, three turns. So you can wait a turn as well. And still just get that value. So you can wait a turn on our gift and get your other engines down first. So, um, Possibly just go Phantom because it's you don't have to use a leader charge to keep it alive. He's also thinking, I guess, about Striga on the Bear Abomination. Or on the... On the swell, but fanatics not bad either. Need a good You're swap good. Real good. Yeah, that back row is filling up quite fast. And he still needs to keep two spaces back row for trip. Like, see, this is what's a little bit bad, right? Um, about Saris is that. There's two spaces kind of dedicated here as well. There's three spaces basically dedicated to these cards. Like that's terrible, right? I guess one thing about this, this queen's card is that Sarah's has to go back row, but then like your payoff cards like Triss. Um, so you, you probably do cut this Ermia and just try to fit in the Anero. Like, Gremist as well isn't really doing a whole heck of a lot for you, so you probably just do cut your Gremian and Gremist. There's too many ranged. You don't want all these ranged roll lock cards when you already have to go Saras and Swarm ranged. Bow before modern Freya. That's one of the great things about, like, the Arrakis Queen list is, right, is that you're able to you're able to efficiently swarm the opposite row of your main row locked card, uh, being your Wispus and your Triss and your Yen. You're able to swarm the front row, and I'll have all your cards swarm the front row, but this card, this this deck kind of, in terms of its swarm, does the opposite and swarms that b b back row potentially. It's not always, right? Like, you can always, you know, but if you have to rely on Saras, you know. You're good. Real good. So, wonder how well this Hound Snout's gonna roll. Even it, I mean, it only has to hit once, right? And then Triss can create. So actually, PB might just win. And by might, I mean it looks look like he's gonna win. You only need to hit one of these skulls. To kill this Egern. Is there any bronzes that deals? Not really. I mean, Brockvark could eventually kill it. What is. Chrome Mother's already on board. Okay. So it's Ermin into Frey and then Triss into uh Gods protect us. Triss into Talisman ideally for him. But could also take the Triss into Slash again if this uh if this Herald goes well. So a couple choices here. Um but does Yeah, I mean 
It's guaranteed. Guaranteed Triss for kind of whatever. But every... All these Triss targets pretty much win, right? <laughs> yeah, you needed to uh, hit these skulls off first. So we lose out on some points on this quartermaster. If you're not fast enough, the windmill will hit you hard. How can I help? But I guess I was wrong. Was there any like combination of cards that just does it here? Not like. It's quite a big gap. Uh, 10 points. 10 points is quite a bit, right? Like, sequencing isn't strictly going to just make that up. Uh, I mean, I think if 9 Kager goes into, like, a full-length round with those similar cards left, like, if there's only one Talisman on the side of PB Lead, I think it takes, like, the longer round, but... All right, so one to two here. I did that was the the best matchup for Nankajer to get this monsters through. So we could see the reverse sweep happening here because again, this wild hunt deck should just get out greeted pretty hard, being that it's devotion. Like PB takes the the Griffin deck, and as long as he doesn't like doom his Arch Griffin, should just be good to go to to absolutely collab. Like we're gonna see like a forty to fifty point Arch Griffin. And then the last is just the monster's mirror and PB has red coin. So um, again, 90 cage, you're gonna have to smork a bleed possibly pretty hard. So ideally gonna wanna find the the tall, the Goliath, the the Egern, obviously in that round one in the monster's mirror. There'll be nothing to pick up when I'm done with you. Yeah, I feel like this matchup is kind of unwinnable for nine cager i don't know because of how consistent the deck is and like when you're when you don't have like the the greed punish then you kind of just auto lose but let's see let's see All right. Ah, oh, fuck. <coughs> so, hmm. how many uh, bruisers? We should have two bruisers, right? So, with double bruiser... Oh, it's only single bruiser. Interesting. So single bruiser, I mean, then you could feasibly think that your Visigoda might survive. Single bruiser is a little bit weird with uh with all that frost, but Okay, we're just going into the arch griffin. Like I was just wondering if like we were just going to go into the Visigoda and try and just, like, heavy buff the Arch Griffin. Because Visigoda is going to kind of suck later. Especially with the uh, Oberon being able to create potentially an extra bruiser. Eh, then it isn't. But then again, you just get to use your defender. So no, Visigoda should just be good. But if you're going to push, right?
All right, so I think that we're going to see kind of similar things here. Like, we're going to see the Mad Charge again. So Mad Charge kind of needs to come down before um, before the TA, right, to be able to give it Vitality. So you give it Vitality, then you Veil it up, and then you Pact it, right? But I guess he's worried and thinking about Anseus on this beast or phantom here. Doesn't have a lot of engine value this round, so I guess you do need to kind of be worried. Which is why I would have liked this Visigoda to come down, potentially. Like, obviously, if there's a bruiser, it's really sad, but, like, I don't know. There's only one. He's only running one bruiser, so least likely in this hand round one. You can also just... Ugh. Bite the bullet and AA for defender. I mean, you have double echo. You have double echo, so like you're always finding the griffin again later. Alright, we just see Triangle come down, just trying to get it as big as possible, as fast as possible, but... I don't know. Are you cold, human insect? It won't be long now. Maybe you just... I mean, you can't really just pass. Like, you, you want to bleed with this thing, but... Like, how are you going to win this round? I feel like it's going to be quite tough for you. There just wasn't enough engine value. It's like you're you 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 for sure are going AA. This mad charge is repulsive. Visigoda is kind of gross because of how late it's going. Long live the king! So we lose a bit of value on the mad charge, taking it after the veil is already down. We've caught another taskmaster. But, I mean, still being six points, I guess, but now you have double taskmaster down on the board. There's still two turns of frost as well, as well as a Pyrian ticking, too. AA does still have quite a bit of separation, so. But like, what are you going? So you're going for this. No Denying, I mean, using all the armor to continuously deny the frost is quite annoying. But like after this AA. Corpses overboard. Live ones to the cage. There's AA. Hmm. Two days of pursuit. So we have a 40 point Arch Griffin, but not much else to play. Like you're kind of passing now. If he's able to get ahead, that is quite the issue. My ice will pierce both your hearts and minds. So it's a tie. I mean, this is your pass, yeah. So luckily, it's a tie. Yeah, holding on to Anseis uh, and Visigoda that long. Like I said, I wouldn't like to see possibly Visigoda away earlier, but maybe he's just afraid. Super afraid of that bruiser in the round one hand. But it kind of allows you, you know, if the bruiser's not in the hand, it allows you to take the round. Or you could have just went AA right into the defender right away. Just said, fuck it. I'm just going to use my first AA right away. Get Defender, and then go Visigoda. Like, if you're able to take the round, you're just winning through a bleed, for sure. He's not able to remove enough value on this Griffin. You just go cards down in the bleed round two, and bada bing, bada boom.
So with the Selkirk and the Anseis here, both being able to hide defend defender is pretty nice. Yep, just again and takes the again. pass. You do get order advantage, which is pretty nice for PB. So overall, you could potentially purify defender. Or you could just move it off the back row, I guess. But ideally, purify it. And then you have the movement for Visigoda. So we'll see if... Still no Oberon yet. It looks like we will not see um, a Purify create this game. No Oberon for, for 9 Kager. Uh, PB able to find... Hey, you miss out on. Missed out on the Arch Griffin. And... Uh, so that's a bit sad. So the Nero is locked on the Arch Griffin. AA is going to be able to get Anna, but your engine value is absolutely insane. Like, you're getting a lot of points per turn. Wait, Gels has Nagelfar, so you do see Oberon. Oh, wait. No, you don't. Never mind. Nagelfar is played. Yep, never mind. Dead Gels. Yikes. So I knew it was a dead Gels because. Our Gaith was kept in hand. Must have just forgot to mulligan it. Maybe thought he had Nagelfar too. Um, so, yep. AA for Anna. And then with this Tritum, it's kind of GG. Oh, and as well as a 35 point Griffin. But. So you're just gonna see the Tritum come down next, right? And you could use a bunch of uh, bunch of Visigoda to charge. It's, I mean, Visigoda is safe too, though. Like you know, he's safe. Um, he's only not safe to an Oberon create, but you would have likely seen the Oberon trying to get created first. So you can kind of assume there's no Oberon for the most part, but. That strike is not doing a whole heck of a lot. Had to wait forever on this Nithral. Um, quite sad. Because uh, this Ardgaith is also going to lose a lot of value. So, yeah. And then PB just wanting to play his Griffin. Because uh, <laughs> he didn't get to play it the other game, unfortunately, was doomed. Uh, Alright, so... We move on to the final match of the series. It is now 2-2 two -two, uh, in this meme pile-off. Again, Monsters proving a little bit hard to get through, um, but we have Monsters Mirror um, now for this final game. Um, so we'll see. Um, Nine Cager is definitely going to have to smork that bleed uh, and get that round control. Um, should be pretty okay getting round control from, uh, from Blue, though. Um, it's just going to be a matter of drawing the drawing the eager and goal yet it's gonna be pretty significant but one nice thing for PB is that like defending the bleed having the renew for uh, renew Cranthir is a lot better um, you know you can use Cranthir to defend the bleed and then just renew them later so uh, could potentially be a little bit better defending the bleed you know you have to have to obviously draw the cards first but The problem with the, the Kiki and Koshi decks is they do get a little bit segmented in terms of like um, their package. Being that you need you need the the Koshi or uh, or Kiki in hand. It's one of the things that kind of annoyed me about like the power of that deck is like having to have it in hand kind of forces you to run cards like Mata. Um, for your consistency, and Mata is just way worse than like a Nero. All right, now we're getting into the final match. 
completely made it into the client today, so I guess we got a we picked a fuck. We picked a lucky day. Picked a lucky day for the client. Because it seems like it's just a kind of a coin flip what day you pick and if it's going to work. Okay, so both players, Egern in hand. Um, so, like, what are PB's points this round other than Egern? Other than Egern and Goliath, not looking like much. I mean, you got fo you get Foglet's playing for okay bit. Vargas just for five. If he can, I'm just going to say Foglet plays for eight. Um. Goliath, Eager, and Maxi. I mean, you're not, you don't have any larva, so like you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to apply too much pressure. I mean, you have Nickers, but you also don't have Hound or, or the Beast or, or Phantom here. So you're not gonna be able to apply too much pressure to this round. Especially not against, uh, not against Ardgaith. But Nine Cager could just be greedy and try and hold on to it. Although, like ideally, this is one of the echoes where it's like, you, monsters often wants to bleed in this round too. So like, you'd rather just play um, the echo round one just to. Wow, we see uh, Koshi coming out in round one. So he's gonna pressure the round with Koshi then, um, being that he runs a renew. So again, this Karanthir is a little bit more flexible in terms of playing it out. So you gotta think. I was going to say, you got to think 9 Cager would want to respect this quite a bit. Um, would have been nice to see Gels just come out and uh, and play the Art Gaith on Thrive Curve. Because that's always something that's so nice is being able to play your Gels for value on Thrive Curve. But um, you can just do that now, I guess. You lose that on the uh, two points of Thrive. But then, yeah, I mean, you play it on Thrive Curve, but then you lose the value on whatever all right so we get a good value striga um that's why he played that's why he played uh a Pyrian. He played a Pyrian just to have that order advantage to be able to kill this off in time so yeah good striga does uh, i don't know does pb have for damage doesn't have any damage other than a Pyrian's order. So Egern is safe as long as you uh as long as you play it at like adrenaline four. It's safe. <sighs> the Nickers comes down, so there's a little bit more tempo on this board. Um can we just go for riders on Thrive Curve here? could possibly come up. again like this art gaith feels so bad like he's waiting quite a while in the art gaith and then we just never end up playing it out like i get getting rid of the the koshi is good um waiting on this art gaith for quite a while feels bad so this is the maxi drawing into phantom oh biocarino beast and kiki I guess you just shuffle it. You can run, you can hide, but I'm gonna get you. All right, Ardigeth comes down now, and this will likely force the round. I know you want to really save that Winter Queen, but I don't know. Like, possibly saving the Winter Queen, but then like you have a lot less turns in round two to get like the points on Ardigeth. Like, at least if you go in a little bit earlier, you're potentially able to force the round a bit earlier to get more value on your bleed. Uh, 
Order advantage in round two is going to be super nice, having this Nith roll order advantage. So now we just play Egern. It plays around uh, Pyrian Phantom. I mean, I guess he's just not super worried. Just trying not to overcommit. I mean, Egern's nice for the bleed in round two as well. But it allows PB to continue to play for reach. But he doesn't. He takes the pass. Still two Ard Gaetherns we're going to tick. So that was another four points. But uh, going to round two now, I feel like we're going to see this Nithril come down right away. Um, yeah. So that was the shuffle. We see him drawing into Beast and Renew. And actually probably pretty glad he shuffled. Because otherwise, you don't shuffle. You're only drawing into Appearian Phantom. And that's it. So able to find all of his golds at this point, right? Just drawing those two. Uh, just about all. <sighs> so nothing to really answer this Nithro. There's no thing to really kill this Egern either. So like this should be a pretty good bleed. You get to kill PB's Egern too. Oh, this is pretty dirty Aridin, right? Yeah, this is pretty dirty Aridin. Hits the right larva as well. Um, so now you're able to kill off both larvas. That's really freaking nice. Oh, this is going to be a pretty scary bleed. Had a lot of what he needed as well. Eager and for good tempo and dominance, you have Nithral down for that first turn order advantage. Um, Engine, and then you have Aridin as well. Uh, as well as Ardgaith, too. Uh, Nagelfar's Taskmaster, not great card. But, like, you'd want this Taskmaster, obviously, to be something else. Bruiser would be better. I mean, almost all these cards would be better than a, than a Taskmaster. So, going for the Renew now. Playing the Koshi. On the front, Aridin row. Yep, right away we see the larva come down and die. Your souls will propel this lump. Alright, so just getting the Taskmaster engine down. So, Agurn being played this late allows for Aperian Phantom to potentially be the Nero target to kill off Agurn, which is really good value. But now we get some good Ardgaith value. And we leader charge for dominance. Oh, are you? Okay. So it's starting to threaten Koshi a little bit. Not really, though. You're going to thrive it. That means you have to play it front row, whatever you're going to try and... So what do you play in front row? Could play Bargus. Could... I guess... Okay, so he's just leadering then, is the way... So that's a bit more of an expensive way to protect the Koshi. All right, just see E. Gurn come down here. You know, likely going to see PB to potentially answer the same way. Could also just save his E. Gurn. Is there? No, there's actually multiple sources of damage that could uh, be very bad against for or be very bad for this E. Gurn in a short run. But maybe he just waits till nine Kager passes to play his. Could just see the Bargus come down. Bargus is quite quite mediocre, obviously, in later rounds. Is he able to get dominance that way? No, not really.
But yeah, it's still just good value. I mean, you just play for this Thrive. Ooh. Front row Koshi dies now. So that's not great. Front row Koshi dying is not great. Mm, a head. A fitting gift for our king. But I mean, you still have Goliath and Egern thriving up a whole bunch. Still back row Koshi. Like, I mean, it's, it's fine. But you have a Nero. Do you have another? I mean, you just use another consume, right? Those are kind of worthless later. I mean, and I guess they're fine on Andrega eggs, but could you also, nothing to really squirrel. So you could just go for the Andrega warrior. Plays for quite a bit of points. So we're just going Goliad here. I guess he's trying to get nine cager just to, just to pass. So two more points on that. Yeah. So, decides to take the pass, hold the Nagel far for next round. We still have six points of leader advantage for uh, for Nankajer here. Um, hmm. Gonna need to find some golds, though. Finds the Oberon, that's pretty big. Oberon being an engine itself. Quite nice. Finds Larva. Larva playing with Oberon's okay. Um, missed out on the uh, missed out on the Goliath slash Osril. But basically missed on the Goliath. You're always taking the Osril. I don't know. It looks like PB is going to win this one. I don't know. It's... Like again, Nagelfire's Taskmaster just being sad. It was sad in round two um, in the Skellige game, and it's going to be sad again this round, too. I feel like most of the time it's kind of a sad card. Because these are Frost decks. You already have enough Frost anyway. And the fact that it doesn't trigger any Thrive is quite sad. All right, so not great. Wanted to find the Conqueror. I guess you get the, eh, it gets you three points, I guess. Eh, the Bruiser isn't terrible, actually. Being able to disable the order. So, Bruiser are actually pretty damn good. So two things to trigger Thrive. Going Nagelfar here. And I mean, PB's plays are sequenced out. Actually, does 9 Kager nine wins this, right? This Koshi isn't doing, or the Kiki isn't doing that much. Actually, no, 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 no. What, what is this Osril doing? Osril's on Goliath. Yeah, actually, PB wins, right? There's six points here. This plays for such bad value. Actually, wait, never mind. It kills the Egern. Yeah, no. He went. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. I'm so. St uh, I forgot it kills the Egern. So it makes the Osril a bit better, but. Holy shit, he does win by one. Oh my god, was that close. Okay, so PB able to pull off the reverse sweep here. Holy shit. I was actually... So this is like way closer than I thought it was going to be in terms of this matchup. 